So in this video, we're going to think about kind of an introduction to what international economics is. The field of economics as, as it exists today really began with international economics. Um, it started when David Hume published a, a essay in the mid-1700s, about 20 years before Adam Smith published The Wealth of Nations. And in Hume's essay, really what he was discussing was uh, British international trade policy. And if you read The Wealth of Nations, um, you'll see that a good portion of that, most of it, is, is devoted to um, British international trade policy. And it was Hume that kind of turned the field of economics from a, a, an informal discussion-based field into a, a, a model-based field, which is, is how you've been taught the economics that you know. We, we think about, about models like the demand and supply model or the model of uh, comparative advantage. Um, and so it was really Hume that, that started that. In terms of how important international trade is, um, if you go back to say the 1960s, at least with the U.S., about 4% uh, of real GDP um, was accounted for by international trade. Um, and that's continued to grow. If you uh, look now, it's roughly 20% of, of uh, real GDP. So international trade is a, a good sized portion of, of our economy. It's even bigger for other countries. So if you, there are several countries where more than half of their um, economic activity is accounted for by international trade. Let's talk for a second about how the field of international econ is different from other sub-disciplines of economics. So if you're thinking about, say, buying a good um, from somebody in another state. Let's say you drive to Kansas and uh, you stop at a store and you buy something. Well, we've studied how that transaction works. We know that price is going to be determined by demand and supply and um, you can take the money that you've got in your pocket or the money that's represented by your um, debit card and you can buy that product and you can drive home and that's really kind of the extent of it. If you buy something from somebody in a foreign country, these days the transaction still kind of feels that way. It's you're going to a lot of times get on on uh, the internet and buy something maybe maybe through Amazon or um, some other online store and it'll be shipped to you and the transaction feels very similar to that transaction of buying something from somebody in Kansas, but there are some important differences. And the first one is that there are two sovereign nations that are involved there, and so there can be restrictions in terms of what you buy or how much you buy that are imposed by the United States. They might limit how much you can purchase from somebody in another country, or those restrictions could be imposed by the other country. It could be maybe not just a limit on how much you buy, but our country may impose a tax on you when you buy it, or, or the foreign country may impose a tax on you when you buy it. Um, so that's the first difference is that depending on the country, there can be different rules about what you can buy or how much you buy. The other interesting thing is that you're going to be paying for the product with a different currency than what they use in the foreign country. If you buy something from somebody in Kansas, that's not even a consideration because we're using the dollar, they're using the dollar, and, and you don't even think about it. But if you buy something from somebody in another country, there's going to be two currencies involved. There's going to be an exchange rate, and what we'll see in this class is that the exchange rate is really the price of currency. So if we think about the dollar and the euro, the exchange rate between the two tells us how many dollars it takes you to buy a euro. And that can change. And what we'll see is that that's determined by the demand and supply for euros versus dollars. And so um, that's an interesting 
um, characteristic of it. You could, if the exchange rate changes, the price that you pay for that good from the foreign country could be different um, in a week than what it is today. And so we have to think about how the exchange rate and the fact that we're using different currencies affects um, economic activity. There are going to be some themes that we're going to cover in this class and the first one is one that you've already talked about and that is gains from trade. So if you think back to um, your principles of macro class or possibly even at the beginning of principles of micro class, you probably studied a model of why people trade. Um, we'll begin um, in our next video talking about that model of why people trade. And the reason that people trade is that there are gains from trading. The world is not a zero-sum game. We're used to thinking about, a lot of people think about the world as if it's a zero-sum game. And what that means is that um, if I'm made better off by some transaction, then that must mean that the other person's made worse off by that transaction. And it turns out that that's not really how it works. There are some times when a particular situation might be a zero-sum game, but in terms of, of trade between two people or trade between two countries, it's actually a positive-sum game. And what that means is that both the parties involved in the trade can be made better off, and that's counterintuitive to a lot of people. So we'll talk about where the gains from trade come from. You probably, hopefully, remember that it comes from people or countries specializing in what they have the comparative advantage in. We'll review that. Um, we'll also talk about the fact that everybody can be made better off by trade, but that's not necessarily, that doesn't necessarily imply that everybody is made better off by trade. So in some of the simple models that we'll talk about at the beginning, um, we'll see that, that everybody involved will become better off, but we'll have a little bit more complicated models that, that are more representative of the real world, and we'll see that in those cases, it could be the case that, that one group can be made better off while another group is not made better off. They could be made worse off. So we have to think about that. How, how are the benefits of trade spread across different groups of people? We'll spend some time talking about what determines the pattern of trade. So who trades what? Um, in the simplest model that you've already talked about in your principles class, you know that you tend to specialize in the good for which you have the comparative advantage. But in that particular model, there's only two goods. And so you specialize in one and you import the other. Well, typically, in a country there are thousands of goods and so we'll need to talk about a model where there are multiple goods. We won't have a thousand but we'll have more than two. And we'll talk about what determines which of those goods you export and which of those goods you import. We'll also spend some time talking about the amount of trade, what, it, what determines how much trade takes place. Um, we'll talk a little bit at the end of the semester or at the, excuse me, at the end of the class about exchange rate determination. So what determines the price of a euro in terms of dollars? Um, you already know, I already said it just a little bit ago, that it's going to come down to demand and supply, but we'll talk more explicitly about um, how that works. Let's start by talking about a model that, that helps us understand empirically um, something about how trade works and the amount of trade that takes place. And this is a model that is known as the gravity model. Um, it, it's really nothing more than an empirical relationship and what that means is it, it's something that helps us understand the data. We can look at the data and we can um, start to get a basic understanding of, of what are the important determinants in term that, that help us understand the amount of trade that takes place. Um, so if we think about how this gravity model works, it's actually very simple. So if we start with 
TIJ, we're going to let TIJ represent the amount of trade that takes place between country I and country J. Okay, so this is the amount of trade. And empirically what we see is that the amount of trade that takes place between two countries is going to be a function of the GDP of those two countries, the size essentially of their economies, and it's also going to be a function of the distance between these two countries. Now the way this relationship works is we're going to put a number A out here. We're just going to let that be a general number for right now, but when we would empirically estimate this, this might turn out to be a, model, a number like 5 or 0.7. Okay, so for now, just think about it as some, some number. And we're going to multiply that by yi times yj. These are going to be the GDPs of our two countries. So this is the GDP of country I and the GDP of country J. Okay? And then we're going to divide that by DIJ. And this is going to represent the distance between the two countries. So here's distance, and right here is uh, GDP. So what this tells us is that the amount of trade that takes place between two countries is related to the the size of the two economies, and notice that if the size of the two economies goes up, or if one of these goes up, that's going to increase the amount of trade. So all other things equal, the bigger the two countries are, the bigger the amount of trade that takes place between them. We've got the distance between the two down here in our denominator, and so what that tells us is that the bigger D is, the farther apart these two countries are, the smaller the amount of trade that takes place. And on the other side of the coin, the smaller the distance here, the bigger the amount of trade that we tend to observe between the two countries. And that makes intuitive sense. We tend to see that countries that are close to each other, Canada and the United States, tend to have a large volume of trade. Countries that are far apart all other things equal, tend to have a smaller amount of trade that takes place between them. And this is, again, referred to as the gravity model. And the reason it's referred to as the gravity model is because this is really based upon Newton's idea of the gravitational pull between two celestial bodies. So if you think about how that works, we can think about the mass of the two bodies. If you have two celestial bodies, the bigger those two bodies are, the greater the gravitational pull between them, and then the farther apart those two celestial bodies are, the less gravitational pull between them. So this is very much based upon Newton's idea of how much, how to estimate the gravitational pull between two bodies. Now in terms of, of how we take this and, and make it useful, it, we're not in this class going to be gathering information on this and somehow estimating it. If you've had an econometrics class, then, then you may have talked about how you would estimate a, uh, a function like this. It's actually relatively easy. Um, but we're not going to be doing that in this class. If, if we did want to estimate it, and you might in the future, um, typically what we do is we estimate a little bit more general version of this. So if we take the amount of economic activity, I'm going to kind of rewrite what we've got here. The way that we tend to actually estimate this is to estimate parameters on it. Alpha, beta, and gamma. And again, if you've had an econometrics class, you know that that doesn't really make it any more complicated. It just makes it operational. It, it, it helps us estimate the relative importance, how the data tells us why i, why j, and this distance variable are actually related to each other. So that's the gravitational mo or the gravity model. Um, we're really not going to do anything more with that. It, it just helps us understand empirically um, how the amount of trade is, is determined. We'll get in the next set of videos, we'll start talking about actual models that help us understand
behaviorally why countries would trade with each other. So we'll do that in our next video.